I am so excited to be sharing with you the brand new stencil that is going to be part of the Woodland Tots collection. Oh my goodness, I love it. You may have seen my initial reaction in my weekly vlog, but honestly, the more I have played with this, the more I love it. It is so incredibly versatile. Let me share just a couple of hints and tips with you today as we create a double page journal spread with it. Okay, so the idea that I have in my head for this particular make is the Folk and the Faraway Tree. I absolutely loved that book when I was younger. Um, it's the first book I ever read in one night, so it has a special place in my heart. So to create that sort of idea, we needed a really, really large tree. So I'm using the stencil, I'm going to extend the trunk of the tree to make it go across both pages. So what I've done is I've pulled out a whole load of brown Distress inks. I believe I have aged mahogany, um, walnut stain and brushed corduroy. And I'm just mixing them up, um, all different ones. I think every time I re-ink my brush, I go into a different brown. So we've got lots of movement and lots of variation. And it's really good. You don't have to be precise or exact. The little bits can overlap and that just sort of adds to the look of it. And then using the squiggly edge, of the stencil just to create the undergrowth of the tree and then I'm building up some grass and some blossoms around the base of the tree just to give it that forest feel and to also make the tree feel less bare I didn't want it to feel like it was a like a winter tree and um, so I wanted there to be lots of movement and color and so I just keep sort of adding these extra little bits as blossoms I use makeup brushes as my blending brush, which is really useful because they come in the sets with these tiny, tiny little brushes. So when picking out the details of this blossom and not wanting to use the whole stencil, it works out really, really well for that because I can get like really detailed things. I'm not ending up with pink grass in the middle of the sky. So that is quite useful. Um, and so I would highly recommend them if I can find them. And I remember, <laughs> I'll try and put it in the um, description box below. Just getting these edge bits. The reason they are there is to give the illusion of a forest rather than a tree standing alone. I'm now getting the Mermaid Lagoon ink out, inking around the edge and behind the tree so that we have a full background picture to work with. How cool is that? That is all being done with the one stencil. I love it when I design something and I come and I'm like, yeah, that works. And then the more and more I play with it, I'm like, yes, I did a really good job. Because <laughs> sometimes you're always a bit like, ooh, is this going to work? Um, but yeah, I am absolutely loving this. I'm loving the fact you can extend it and play with it. As you may know, I do love to work with a bit box. So what I do is I stamp a whole load of images out, I colour them in, I sit and fussy cut them. So I have got this massive, massive bit box full of gorgeous girls and critters and creatures that belong to the Woodland Tot collection. So I've literally just spilled them all out of my day onto my desk and I'm just pulling different elements in to try and create the scene. Um, I'm just thinking that, I'm tr I just think of all the little creatures that were in Folk in the Faraway Tree and how it was a hive of activity. I've now actually had the idea that if I turn the journal page the other way, I could have done an even bigger tree and I could have maybe incorporated windows and things. So that might be an idea for a future project. But in the meantime, I'm just gradually getting all of these different elements to add detail. The next thing is to stick it all down. So I will be using this Nuvo glue to do that. I find that it works really well. And despite my reputation with glue, I find it doesn't clog too much on me. <laughs> And I'm just cleaning up the edges after it's all been stuck down. When I get little bits that have come off, I do tend to just flip them around straight away and add them to the picture. I hate to waste anything. And yeah, you're never going to use something that small in your bit box. But if you just use it then and there, it always sort of adds to the picture and can make the foliage look a little bit fuller than if you just left it. The final thing, that's me just add another little bit there. And then the final thing to do will just be to chop the little deer's bottom because it's hanging off the edge of the page. If that had been a card, in all honesty, I would have left it, but because it's a journal page, I want it to sit ni nicely in the journal. Now, I did feel that I have lost some of the look of the grass and the blossoms in putting the characters over. A lot of that was really covered up. So I am just going back in again with one of those really small brushes 
and adding a little bit more grass and a little bit more blossom just to fill that out um, and because I really like the look of it and then I completely lost it so just to get in that um, the look of that back just adding that back in now Just to ground the whole image much better, I have grabbed a few pencils in various shades of green and sort of adding to that grass effect just by scribbling a little bit and making it a little bit darker below the feet of the various characters just so it looks like they're standing on something and not floating on air. I do think grounding when you're trying to create images and pictures is really important and it does make such a huge difference to the overall feel. Now because all the characters and things have been stamped out, they have the black outline um, and the tree doesn't because it's a stencil, but I wanted a cohesive look across the whole page. So to do that I am now taking um, a black fine liner and just very loosely scribbling in some lines. You can see I've got my hand quite far back on the pen, so I'm not looking for anything precise, I'm just basically outlining what is already there for the stencil and I'm kind of going in and picking little bits out of the bark shapes as well and just filling that in until we have that all completed and as I said it just helps it to look like it's all meant to be together. I do like having the contrast of various mediums, obviously we've got distress inks in the background. I've used my Copic markers to colour in and I have used pencils on the groundwork. And I do think all those mediums have a slightly different look, but they can work really cohesively together. And I do absolutely love it. But I just did feel that not having the black lines for the tree in the background just made it look kind of washed out. And obviously, because in my head, the story of this is the folk in the faraway tree. The tree should be quite prominent. It should be the first thing that you see. So I didn't want it sort of edging into the background on this occasion, which is why I chose to outline it in the way that I did. Now me being me, the whole page now needs a doodly border as well. I just help find that helps to draw the eye into the page and complete the look a little bit, but like putting um, a favourite photograph or picture into a frame. And so that is why I do that there. So that is me just finishing this off right now. I hope you enjoyed creating that woodland wonderland with me today. If you do enjoy art journaling, you might want to check out some more of my videos, which you can find right here.